Hi, I am Dr. Katherine Palmarola from our IVFMD South Miami office, and I'm going to briefly explain how fallopian tubes work. So they are a very critical part of our fertility. Brief overview of anatomy. Fallopian tubes are the physical structure that connect the ovary to our uterus. But beyond just a simple transport mechanism, they're actually playing a very active role in fertility. So the fallopian tube has a fimbria at the end, fimbriated end. There is an ampulla portion, which is the slightly enlarged dilated end of the fallopian tube, and then a narrow isthmic portion that connects it to the uterus. So the fimbriated ends, these are critical to helping capture the egg. And they have very fine little finger projections that can actually envelop the whole ovary and help to capture the egg. They have little adhesive areas that grip our eggs um, and help transport it into the tube. And it's thought after ovulation, this occurs within 15 to 20 minutes, the egg is in the fallopian tubes. Additionally, these fimbriated ends with the adhesion device, they may store sperm and hold the sperm at the ends um, waiting for our eggs. So fimbria, very critical. They're soft, um, flexible finger-like projections to help capture the egg. The ampulla is the slightly dilated end of the fallopian tube, not too enlarged, but it's naturally a little bit larger than the rest of the tube. And um, this is where the egg and the sperm or embryo spend most of its time transporting through the fallopian tube. Inside the ampulla are very, and actually lining the entire fallopian tube, are very, very fine little hairs called cilia that actually move in unison, in synchrony, to help sweep the egg or embryo, hopefully it's fertilized, towards the uterus. And it's thought to be responsive to hormones, both estrogen and progesterone, um, similar to the follicular phase where the lining of the uterus is developing nice prostaglandins and materials for an embryo. Similarly, the lining of the fallopian tube is responsive to estrogen and hopefully building up materials for an embryo or an egg. So the ampulla plays a critical role of actually holding an embryo until it's ready to be implanted in the uterus. So one, most of the time from the egg moving from the end to the uterus is actually spent in this ampulla portion. And it needs to spend a little bit of time there so that the uterus has time to be receptive and um, become in synchrony ready for implantation. So most of that holding time occurs in the ampulla. Finally, there's a narrow area that just connects the fallopian tube to the uterus. So fallopian tubes are critical. They pay a very active role in fertility by both providing some nutrients to the developing egg and embryo. They are a critical component of the movement through these fine cilia movements within the ampulla, um, as well as some muscular contractions. There's smooth muscle within the fallopian tube, so they, that helps to move, um, transport the egg as well as embryo. And as, as a holding time, both to hold sperm, little adhesive areas within the cilia and the ampulla and fimbria, hold sperm to get them ready for an egg, as well as hold an embryo during its development so that the uterus has some time to be receptive. We have a great test to look at fallopian tube structure, the shape. This is the hysterosalpingogram procedure but we do not have a good test for how the fallopian tube functions. How are these various adhesion areas working? How do the fimbria move? How are these little cilia working? We don't have a direct test for that, but simply questioning you on your history, any prior infections or surgery or endometriosis might give us clues if the fallopian tube has a risk of damage or if we expect it to be working normally. So that's the fallopian tube in a nutshell.